Sabbath peace. Sabbath it's another opportunity for us to hear and learn that the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. Our honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or supernatural experience, you know what I'm saying? Some people say, you know, I just felt God's presence with me today. That's all good and fine and dandy. But it will all be held against you in the day of judgment if you do not repent. That said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is, what we say to them? Repent. Repent so they that might live. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Randy. Where are we going? Isaiah, I got that. He chose it. 912. Uh, it's really 913. We'll take, we'll take 912. You want to start from the beginning, though. 11D5. Look at her. She's trying to teach the Bible. Look at her. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you oppress women. <laughs> 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 Isaiah 912. They don't take that one clip, you know what I'm saying? Like, see? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be up there with R. Kelly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Them boys. Y'all see how they doing R. Kelly? Oh, man. Yeah. Woo. What? Long overdue. I mean, long overdue. He did so. Watch out. Watch, watch me get myself in trouble. Y'all see how he's doing that, man? That man crazy. I'm just doing that thing because I know this thing going to go on Facebook and everybody how you, knows. How you get away with that thing for so long? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to cause a controversy make somebody accidentally get saved. I can't believe he just said how they did R. Kelly. I start preaching that word, man. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you know I'm saying it can happen. Oh no, you know what I'm saying? No, it's, 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 what? You talking about R. Kelly? You got away with that thing. It's 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 <laughs> not just, not just got away with it. Everywhere. Huh? That was happening everywhere. It was. That's another thing. That's another thing. But no, nah, you know the, the part that make his despicable because it was happening everywhere. You're right. But the part that make his despicable, and I don't even want to say more so than anybody else. He is just out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that thing was in broad daylight. Like, the fact, I ain't seen the documentary yet, but the fact, you know what I'm saying, I'm hearing about everything that's in the documentary, and you can document all of this stuff that was in the public eye, and so many people just was like, mm. you know what I'm saying? And it's like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm, you, you mess with a young girl, and like, okay, that, that happens a lot. People turn their head, whatever. It's still disgusting and despicable or whatever. But all the stuff that came out about the man, including and up to, him urinating on the little girl. That's that's insane. Like it's insane that the man gonna walk after that. And honestly, I remember. Like I remember at the time and I, I remember I mean I was a kid, but I remember being, you know what I'm saying, indifferent to the whole thing. Like mm -hmm, you know it was like a joke, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pee, you know what I'm saying? It was like a joke. You know what I'm saying? So that thing make you that thing make you think, like you know what I'm saying? Let that thing happen to a little white girl, what happened? You know what I'm saying? It happened to a little Hebrew girls, like, you know what I'm saying? They teach us to turn that thing into a joke. And not just they, we teach ourselves right. to turn that thing into a joke. You know what I'm saying? It just say, it say a lot about how we feel about ourselves. So I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the people that, that that's outraged about it, even though even though I feel uh, a lot of them, like, many of them, well, they've been are go, they, 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 well, they go too far in the passion and the anger. I think, uh, you know, it, it puts yourself in a position where you lose lose credibility, you know what I'm saying, for yeah. what you're actually trying to do. You see all the celebrities trying to out the homie, you know what I'm saying, like... Oh, yeah, because it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. They wasn't doing it back then, though. And they got the power know? to, like, do something about it. Yeah, they wasn't saying nothing back then. Now they're trying to out them, you know A lot of people wouldn't know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? You got to balance that thing with, okay, everybody was wrong, and now you're doing something right, cool. But it's like, how many of y'all doing something right just for the look, though? You know what I'm saying? Just because, you know what I'm saying, like... Like, you kind of see what, what way the wind going now. So it's like, okay, let me, let me just kind of go with that. And that's that's the unfortunate part, cause it's like as much as stuff is exposed, you still, you still in this place of like, who can I trust? You know what I'm saying? Like, who 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 are, who are we supposed to be able to trust? You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, and people don't like hearing this though. But at the end of the day, man, we gotta protect our kids. 
We gotta protect our kids. We gotta we gotta tell our kids what's going on, and we gotta walk with integrity. We can't we can't be in a place where just because you know what I'm saying our daughter is running around, you know what I'm saying, and got an opportunity to be a superstar, we let her hang out with this other superstar, and we know you know what I'm saying we know that something weird might be happening, but we kind of like close our eyes to it because we don't want to see it because we'd rather the good that's gonna come out of the situation more than the the, the, the absolute trauma that's gonna affect our daughter. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a uh, that's 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 what I get out of this whole situation, man. It's like, man, we gotta protect these kids, and not just our own kids, man. We gotta protect all these kids. We gotta protect all these kids, man. That stuff ruin people. That stuff ruin people. That stuff stick with you. It's memories that you know what I'm saying. Like I got memories that haunt me. That's not even like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like imagine like always having this memory or making like you have to make yourself used to it. You know what I'm saying? That's sick. Like, you got to make yourself, like, you have to live with it and be like, well, I have to still operate through my daily life and appear that I'm sane. You know what I mean? So now you've settled in your mind this sick thing that's, that's happened to you that you've never dealt with, that you feel like you can't talk to nobody about, that you feel ashamed about, that you feel like you you start blaming yourself about this stuff. And then now, and now, and now you see, you see uh, so many people that perpetrate what happened to you. You know what I'm saying? I've got these women out here flashing. You know what I'm saying? I got a friend that she, you know, she flashed. You know what I'm saying? It took me a second. I had to like kind of think about that thing. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? She's sitting there on Facebook flashing and stuff. Even said some, some stuff about me. You know what I'm saying? That like low key hurt my feelings. But I'm like, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like, you know, like, calm down, killer. You know what I'm saying? You're all right. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? You, you see that happening and it's like, Everything in you might want to react, but you got to take a step back and be like, you know what I'm saying, man? People, the people don't know what to do with themselves, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Who, who, teach, who teaching us? Who teaching us, like, okay, you know what? When this happened to you, this is how you handle it. Who teaching us righteousness? Who teaching us loyalty? You know what I'm saying? We don't know nothing about no darn loyalty. You know what I'm saying? It just turned into a, a match of women versus men, right? All men are disgusting. All women are worthless. You know what I'm saying? A woman don't know how to be a woman, so why would I protect her? Why the man ain't protecting me? Right? Why the men ain't protecting these young women? Why men all they turn their head? Why men treat black women like this? You know what I'm saying? So that becomes the argument. And it's a valid argument on both sides. Let's talk about it, but let's really talk about it. Come on. Don't tell TJ. Alright, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Let's really talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about let's talk about like what really needs to happen. At the end of the day, who will fall on? Gotta fall on us. And when I say us, what are we talking about? Man. Gotta fall on the man. At the end of the day, gotta fall. My whole, my whole thought, this is my thought process when I was younger. My whole thought process was like, I, I always like admired women. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it always was like, women to me are so powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like they can, they, they are able to make stuff. Cause I've seen the strongest, most amazing. And when I say amazing, my, my definition of amazing was a little different back then, but like the strongest, most courageous, brave men be completely broken down by women. Like I've seen it. Men that I thought like, man, look, they have faced anything. And I seen them bawling in tears. So in my mind, I'm like strongest guy brought on his knees by woman. And she behind the scenes the whole time. To me, that's the most powerful thing. So I model the way I live off of that. Like, I always want to operate behind the scenes. Like, I don't want to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, this was difficult for me, like being in front of the camera and all that. You know what I'm saying? Because I always want to be like the guy that's like, you know what I'm saying? But I want to make moves from behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? I want to be like, okay, yeah, this, that, and other. Because it's like, you don't have to face, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to face people. You know what I'm saying? I can make moves. Nobody know I'm making the moves. And at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else that can deal with the faces. Somebody who's better at speaking or convincing people and all that can do it. I'll just be behind the scenes doing it. So I was like, that's the perfect spot for a woman. So I always wanted a daughter. Always wanted a daughter. Because I wanted to make my daughter into like this, this super manipulative, like, you know what I'm saying, get whatever she want out of any situation. Because I knew that, you know, I knew I knew I was able to help a woman be like that. And so that's how I always thought. I always was like, whenever we got into these conversations, it's like when we were younger, my mindset was always, man, it fall on a woman. Because I knew the woman was more powerful. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking like, man, look. If if women tomorrow, if every woman tomorrow just stopped and said, you know what, ain't nobody getting no draws. Right? Tomorrow, nobody get draws. The only way you get draws is if all y'all take care of y'all kids. I guarantee, and I still believe it, I guarantee these boys be the 
best fathers y'all ever seen in y'all darn life. Oh no, let's go, let's go talk some balls. You know what I'm saying? Oh, good, good, good one, son. You know what I'm saying? Be the best darn dad you ever seen in your darn life. Because that's what we do. We sort, we sort seek after the women. But what I didn't realize is what the book said. Give me Genesis. Give me, give, me, give me Genesis chapter 3. What? Well, we're going to go to Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk a little bit. I'll talk a little bit. It's Genesis chapter 3. All right, a lot of times we look, that's why, the, that's why the book tells you about the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. We've been reading that, right? So we've been reading it, talking about the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. That's what the book is talking about. I had that carnal mind. My carnal mind was looking at, well, technically, shifting responsibility. Technically, if all the women lined up, when all the women just going to line up just because they feel like it? When is that ever going to happen? What? Don't get me started on that. It's Genesis chapter 3. Give me verse, uh, what verse I want? Probably want 13, 12. Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. You can start at 13. All right, it's Genesis chapter 3. Give me verse 13. Watch what the book says. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is it that you have done? Uh-huh. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Uh-huh. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, mm -hmm. and above every beast of the field, upon the belly that should go, and... On the belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Okay. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Okay. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In okay. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And then what up? And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He said, thy desire shall be to thy what? Husband. So when is a woman just going to stand up and be like, you know what? I don't want none of y'all men Boy, until y'all straighten up and do what we want y'all to do. When is that going to happen? When the Most High God told her, her desire is going to be what? For the husband. And then what? And he shall rule over you. That's already, I'm not saying there's no exceptions to this. If there's an exception, that's weird. The nature of a woman, like she has to make herself different. The nature of a woman is to be like, you know what? Huh? Women, right now, right now, all of you little girls, what are they dreaming about as a, at a young age? Wedding. They looking for like, man, my knight shining armor, my prince charming. Oh, I'm going to have this most beautiful. Because the nature of them is to like, look, I want like my man, like my desire is going to be for a man. And I want a husband, right? That's why I'm dreaming of a wedding. So that means that he going to do what? Rule over me. These women, these women that you always see, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, good, who, who's, a, who's a good guy when they, you know what I'm saying? When they, you know what I'm saying? When they out there, you a good guy? You, you know what I'm saying? Do you, would you ever consider yourself a good guy? You consider yourself a good guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't one of them dudes, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to be a player type dude. You know what I'm saying? You like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Got decent respect for women. It's like, you know what I'm saying? You just really want a girl to love you. So that you type of type. would have been the best of us at that age. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's a good thing, right? So you're a good guy. But then, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the women that y'all, you know what I'm saying, looking, you attracted to, it always seems like they go after what? Why is that? There's a whole lot of reasons. That's a loaded question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We got. I don't know. We got enough time to dive into all the reasons. But one of the reasons is because those type of guys tend to have more of the the the, the ego. So it make them feel like that's the guy that's gonna rule over me, right? He's more commanding. Like when we go, you know, what I'm saying as a good guy, when you go, you all, you know, what I'm saying, look, sweetheart, um, I just, you know, what I'm saying, can I, can I, can I ask you out on a date tonight? You all polite and everything. You know what I'm saying? How we do? You know what I'm saying? We go up. Why are you standing next to me? Right? And you do that? She be looking like the nerve of this guy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what his darn problem is. But guess what? In her mind, oh, he'll rule over me. She don't know she's thinking that. But that's what he's saying. He'll rule over me. And that's what she likes. That's what she's attracted to. That's why you get these girls that, you know, end up in abusive relationships. It's, it's sick because we haven't learned how to, we haven't been taught to see the right thing. We haven't been taught to like, okay, this is what the real one looked like. So based off our ignorance, we see all these things that are really bad signs, and then we take them and be like, well, that's strength, right? That's yeah. passion. This is somebody who's taking control, ruling over me, right? And so the women, the women go after that. And we had the same thing as guys. 
You know what I'm saying? We get these these traits that we, you know what I'm saying, that, that we see as nurturing. Like a woman give us, you know what I'm saying, whatever we want or, you know what I'm saying, do whatever we want for them. We see that. See, she's nurturing to me. You know what I'm saying? Even though the things that she's giving us is bad for us, you know what I'm saying? We we take that and we say, okay, that's my woman. You know what I'm saying? She's nurturing to me and that thing end up bad. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's how these things play out because no one has taught us. No one's, no one's came, first of all, has taught us the book. It just kind of told us, well, this is a righteous man. This is an unrighteous man. That's what you need to be after that righteous man. Righteous man ain't gonna do all these things to you. That thing get the book. You know what I'm saying? Nobody told us, oh, you got a man that'll put his trust in the book into a God that he can't see. Oh, he'll definitely be faithful to you. You ain't gotta worry about that. You know what I'm saying? That thing is all right. Right? This is this is what we gotta line up to see. Right? right? Once we taught that, then it's like, okay, now I know what a guy that rule over me, now I know what that looked like. Yeah. Right? Now I know what a woman that's gonna take care of me, now I know what that looked like. You know what I'm saying? But the rest of this stuff in the world, that stuff is backwards. All this stuff. It is backwards, you know what I'm saying? You look at you look at these Muslims. I don't want to hear no. I don't want to hear one Muslim speak out against R. Kelly. That's crazy. Yeah, maybe. How many? How many? How many young wives did Muhammad have? That boy would like a nine year old or something. He would. He married a nine year old, written in their books. Right, and he had a bunch of wives that was young. I think that was just like nine or eight with the young. I said, I mean, he's a sicko. He was a darn sicko. And y'all follow after this darn man. Y'all lost y'all darn mind. They try to put that evil on our book. Yeah, well, you know, people in the Bible time, you know what I'm saying? Show it to me in my book. Show me one, show me one occasion when we had a young girl. Even in the parable, the most high God was careful enough. What's the parable of that? Ezekiel 13? Mm, I think so. Let's see. Let's see if it was Ezekiel 13. We'll talk a little bit tonight. These people darn sicko. Yeah, past the flower. Yeah, age. that girl got to be past the flower of her age. Yeah. He don't tell us exactly what the age is, but you ain't never seen nothing in the book where you messing with a 13-year-old girl. You ain't never seen nobody messing with no darn 15-year-old girl in the book. You would never see it. Matter of fact, all the men that were labeled men able to, you know, go to war was 20 and up. Yeah. So, like... You was a kid before that. Yeah, because it seemed like most of guys was like, okay, anybody under 20 is a little too young to go fight. Any man, anyway. You know what I mean? Here... You can go to the army when you're 18. Yeah. These people, all of them, predators. Praying out their kid. And then you send you to the army, they ain't gonna send, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, they ain't gonna send their kids. You know what I'm saying? They gonna send their kids. This one, let me show you how this thing work out. They gonna send their kids when it's like part of their family. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad got drafted and he took pride in the military. So it's like now my son got, you know what I'm saying, join the military. But so my dad got ranked though. You know what I'm saying? So when my when I joined, when my dad got ranked, so when I joined the military, what's gonna happen to me? Oh you? Oh you? Oh! Come over here. You know what I'm saying? Worry about it. No, no, no. We'll put you over here. We'll get you up there real quick. Right? But did he get his family told him to go to the military, right? That was like their choice and they knew, you know what I'm saying, it's gonna be a different route for him. Now, when we go to the military, how that thing happen? Oh, it's a little different, right? Because we probably got, what, like ROTC at our school, right? Probably got ROTC at our school. Then after that, then we go and we trying to shop for colleges. And then right in our senior year, they got like four booths set up. One of them is Navy. The other one is Marines. We got the Army and the Air Force. They got them all got their booths. You know what they tell us? You can't afford them colleges over there, can you, boy? No, 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 no. We'll pay for your whole four-year ride. Just come over here. They sign you up for that thing. Now they got control over you for whatever time period. So in our mind, we just sitting there, look, man. Only read. When was the last time you heard a black person say, you know what, I'm about to go to the, 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 the you know what I'm saying, go join the army because I really believe in what America is doing over there. Them white kids, that's where, I, that's where they go. Like, my pops was in the draft. You know what I'm saying? So now... White kids, you know what I'm saying? They like, no, nah, I believe, like, nah, man, this is my family being in the middle. That's different. It's their country. The black kid? When was the last time you see? Man, listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, those, those Afghanistanians can't even pronounce that thing. We don't know nothing about no darn Afghanistanian. What you talking about? We go in there because, you know what I'm saying? They're going to cut the check and they're going to pay for my school. Right? They don't pay for my school. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. It's something they get older and be thinking about that thing. Time get rough, they be like, listen, man, I'm just thinking maybe I should just join the military. I mean, at least if I do that, you know what I'm saying, I could send some money back to my family, and then when I get back, I'll be set up. That's the dream that they sell it. 
How many bad? I mean, how many bad stories we saw of people that go to the military? Go there for a year, get out, dishonorable discharge. You know what I'm saying? All these different things. They quit. You know what I'm saying? Mess up their darn life. They can't get a darn, darn job because it's, it's on their record. All this stuff. It's a lot of bad stories to come with that thing, right? Must not be as pretty as they try to make it seem. Take commitment just like anything else. Not saying, not saying it's all the way bad and you can't do it. Take commitment just like anything else. But that type of commitment, you got to believe in what you're doing. If you just going for the money, that thing ain't going to work out for you. You have to believe in what you're doing. Or you have to believe in what you plan on doing afterwards so much that you're going to deal with all of the stuff that they're going to put you through. Because they definitely going to degrade you. They definitely going to brainwash you. They definitely could. They can't afford to put you out there next to somebody who's going to shoot up some folks while some other people shooting at y'all. They can't have you out there like where you really don't, you know what I'm saying, believe in the cause. That don't make no sense. They got to make sure that you fit. So they're going to they gonna tire you out. They're going to make you delirious. And when you're delirious, guess what I can do to you? Oh, now I can talk you into some stuff. You an 18-year-old, 17-year-old boy. Now I can talk you into some stuff. How is that any different from what R. Kelly's doing? This country been raping us for years. Ain't no darn different. Right? Ain't no darn different. That's why I look at it and people don't like it. You know what I'm saying? People don't really like it. And I get it to some degree. You know what I'm saying? But when you start bringing up other stuff in relation to this R. Kelly, they just want to focus on R. Kelly. Right? And I get it because to some degree it's like, listen, this man had been on trial. We didn't saw evidence. And he made it. He made it free. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of hurt people are connected to this man. Let's not change the conversation too quick. Because then it's just another situation where he get free. Right? And these people still giving him a pass. So I get it from that aspect. But at the same time, man, it's still a Harvey Weinstein out there. I'm just trying to figure out how Bill Cosby and, and R. Kelly getting, you know what I'm saying? They getting all the, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, mm, it's a whole lot of other creeps. You know what I'm saying? They got, uh, what's his name? The Moondez guy? Moondez, the one, I think he's CBS or something like that? Yeah. They cut him like $200 million for, for, you know what I'm saying, touching on people. How you get a check for, you know what I'm saying? Like, you get paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, you got to leave the company. Oh, here goes your separate package. What's the other one? Uh, the guy with the, with the gymnast? Hugh Oh, yeah, I saw that meme too. Yeah, Hugh you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm talking about him. Hugh is out here, you know what I'm saying, doing a whole lot of weirdo stuff too. You know what I'm saying? He had, a, he, had a, he had a little girl. I was, reading, I was reading about him. He had a little girl that was posing for him. Yeah, that was like yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Had a little girl that was posing for him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, when we gonna, when we gonna talk about something? that like, he gone, though. You know what I'm saying? So hey, there ain't nothing you can do to him. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, let's talk about it. Let's talk about all these, cre these creepy people y'all worship. Right? I saw something with Paul Walker. You know what I'm talking about? Paul Walker, you know the guy who's in Fast and Furious? Yeah. And he died. Yeah, he would a uh, he would a sixteen year old. They say, I was like, man, I, I, you know what I'm I don't know nothing about none of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know nothing about none of that, that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But you look at it it's like, yeah, all these people are creeps. Jay Z might be a creep too. Might be. You know what I'm saying? No. Biggie Small might be a creep too. I firmly believe he was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all these people are not creeps. What are we gonna do? Dame Dash out there running that bar mouth. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you and R. Kelly, same age. And y'all was with Leah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all same age. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he way older than you. Both of y'all. Wasn't he with her like years later though? He is with her years later. He was like in her 20s though. That, I don't know if it was that much later. When, when, the, what was that though? When she died? He was with her when she died. He was with her before she, she died though. Yeah, like I, don't, I, don't she I don't think he was with her. I don't think he was with her right when she died. No. It's probably like a year. But either way. You got you a 30-year-old man, and you with a 19, 20-year-old girl. Yeah. Drake. Drake, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people that's, like, borderline, you know what I'm saying, creepy. You know what I'm saying? It ain't illegal. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But it's like, that attitude is still there. Yeah. And so now it's like, who going to draw that line for us? It's legal some places to mess with a 16. It's legal here. You mess with a 16-year-old girl. All right? She can send her like, to pants, something like that. What is it? Nah, I think it's just legal. You can mess yeah, with a 16-year-old girl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You didn't mess with a 16 year old girl. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where, who draws that line? It's creepy. 16 year old, right, creepy. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 you're a creep. You know what I'm saying? So, to all the women out there, if you dealing with, it says something about a man, right? It says something very important about a man who messes with a woman who's, or a girl who's significantly younger than him. 
All right, just said something. It's, 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 it's a reason. Like, it's always reasons that people have tendencies to do things, especially if it's a repeated thing. All right, said something about a woman, too, when she's looking for an older guy. Um, that's not as negative. But a, a man who's looking, right? It's one thing to be like, okay, you know, my husband's 10 years older than me. We weren't really looking for each other. We just ended up in this situation. That's one thing. It's like, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? As long as she's of age, right? But I get it. But if you have a guy who is always in the club where there's 20-year-olds and he's 30-something, that's a problem. Because he's looking for it. Like, that's the crowd he's looking for. Why is he not either attracted or why can't he deal with women that is his age? It's a reason for it. Right, there's a reason for it. He's mentally unstable. He can't deal with a woman that knows what she's talking about. You know what I'm saying? He's probably weak. So he throws and fires something that he can, you know what I'm saying, that he can manipulate, that he can feel like he taught something to. Like, oh no, baby girl, let me show you something. You ain't never been through that. That he can control. Alright, that's why the whole relationship turned that way. He spoiled him, you know what I'm saying, flash him, you know, flash some stuff with him, and then it's just mind control after that. I mean, it can't be about if you date someone that's that young. What are you trying to do? Ain't nothing, ain't nothing, all that stuff is just darn love. That's crazy. People are sickos. All right, sickos. But we look at it. Uh, let's. What, what we got? You find what I'm looking for? Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel. Yeah, yeah. Who is Ezekiel? What? Uh, sixteen. Ezekiel chapter chapter sixteen verse what? It's Ezekiel chapter sixteen verse seven. All right, it's Ezekiel chapter sixteen verse seven. Watch the Most High God. It's a parable. Watch how the Most High God line this thing up. Oh, six. All right, this is verse six. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when you was in thy blood, live. Mm -hmm. Yea, I said unto thee, when you were in your blood, live. I have caused you to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased in wax and great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown. Whereas thou was naked and bare. Mm -hmm. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, says the Lord God, and thou shalt be mine. Now start me off at one. Okay. This is verse one. So this is Ezekiel chapter 16, verse one. So we just saw the end of the story, right? Watch out the beginning start. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Mm -hmm. And say, Thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy what? Birth and thy nativity. So he's telling a parable. He's, he's, he's illustrating a story. He said, Tell Jerusalem. So now he's illustrating Jerusalem as if Jerusalem is a person, right? a little girl. He said, Thy birth and thy nativity. So that means you were born and you were young, right? So let's hear about this, this little girl that was born and young. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. Right? I knew your mom and your dad. Right? So obviously, she was born. He knew the mom and dad. It's an older man. Right? So let's hear about it. And as for thy nativity in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. He said, somebody just left you out there. They gave birth to you. You still got, you still got the umbilical cord attached to you. Right? They left you there. So what'd you do? Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Mm -hmm. None I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Mm -hmm. and when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thine own blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Mm -hmm. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxed and great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Right? In other words, she grew up. Right? What happened? Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. So now he's describing a mature woman. Right? Your breast is fashioned, and your, your hair is grown. Right? Let's go. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. Right? And what happened? And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yeah. Right? So now he's describing a woman, right? Now you've grown, and then I look, and now you're naked. So now that you've grown, you're naked. Oh, I got respect for you. Right? You've grown now. Let me cover you up. Right? He described a baby and then a woman. But after she came to a time of what? 
Wow. She old enough. Right? Watch this. And thou became mine. Now I make you mine. Right? Our folks don't play that stuff. We don't play this, you know what I'm saying? Like dealing with these little girls and all that dumb. No, we don't play that stuff. Yeah. You'll never find it in our book. Even Paul said, uh, when you got your virgin after the time of, after the flower of her youth, then you marry. Yeah, you don't play, you don't play none of that stuff. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That's these weirdos. You know what I'm saying? That's these, that's these other people, creeps that be doing that stuff. That stuff is nasty for us. All right? Absolutely disgusting for us. So, so since time then, their flower would have probably been a lot later than ours. Huh? The flower is talking about a period, right? Or, well, no, not uh, necessarily. That's I, that's what most people look at it as, but I I don't believe that's what it's talking about. I don't think it's just talking about that. Yeah, I, I don't think no, I don't think it's puberty. I think I think it's just a way of indicating that this is the transition of her being a, a mature woman. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's connected to a lot of times we we look at the flower as being the uh, you know what I'm saying the cycle and all that when her cycle start. But I think I think it's just denoting the time like okay now she's a mature woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't make sense for Paul to say you can get married after her period. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's grab uh, what we got. Oh, uh, we said Isaiah, Isaiah right? chapter 9, verse what? 12. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 12. Let's see what we got then. Then we finished out Judges. I mean, we got to start in the book of Ruth. That's Danielle's favorite book. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Watch this. For the people turns not unto him that smites them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. Mm -hmm. the, the ancient and the honorable, he is the head, and the prophet Where? that teaches lies, he is the tail. Where'd you read from? Isaiah. Chapter what? No. Keep going. But the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that made them of them are destroyed. Mm -hmm. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall he have mercy on their fatherless and widows. Mm -hmm. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer. He said all of them is hypocrites and evildoers. Watch it. And every mouth speaks folly. For all his anger is, for all this, his anger is not turned away. What's folly? Every mouth speaks folly. What does that mean? Foolishness. Nonsense. Foolishness. You're talking stupid. All right, all y'all be talking stupid. He, he not talking about us right now. We get on Facebook. The whole timeline is just talking about sit. Watch it. Watch it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want. I don't want to act like I'm just making up stuff. Watch it. And let's just start at the top of this thing. Yeah, look. Oh, I don't want to do her like that. I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip her. She talking fools now. I'm gonna skip her. I ain't gonna do her like that. She might just be watching. <laughs> Y'all know, ain't nobody getting them darn a different word taxes because we ain't saw the Liberty Tax dude outside dancing. That's a joke. Funny. I like it. Silliness, right? Let's see what the next one we got. Okay. I wish Wayfair will stop showing me ish on here that I like. And it's out of stock. Silliness, right? Okay, let's see what else we got. If my man, I ain't gonna do my man like that. I ain't gonna do it. It was silliness too, though. You know what I'm saying? I can do my man. Let me what else we working with here. Okay, my son is getting so good with the comebacks and delivery in our bagging sessions. Boy, I was going in on my son's lips. Silliness, right? This is all real stuff. We can just go down the whole timeline. Every darn post don't make nothing, ain't talking about nothing, ain't teaching nobody nothing. Every now and again, you get like a little fake meme and make it seem like they're teaching you something. You look into it, silliness. Right? This ain't talking about us? Keep going, watch this. For wickedness burns as the fire. It, mm -hmm. shall, devour, it shall devour the devour the briars and thorns. And shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like a lifting of smoke. Mm -hmm. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. 
and he shall snatch on the right he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry and he shall eat on the left hand and they shall not be satisfied mm -hmm. they shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm Manasseh Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh and they together shall be against Judah for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still all right so he, he painted the picture that all the Hebrews gonna mess around and be against each other all right you know how Hebrews against Judah that's happening too Woe right. unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Mm -hmm. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and they may rob the fatherless. Mm -hmm. And what will ye do in the day of visitation and in, in the desolation which shall come from far? All right, he said, what are you going to do in the day of visitation? What does that mean? The, uh, the judgment day. All right, the day when I come down and get your darn butt, what are you going to do? And he said, when the desolation comes from where? Far. What is he talking about there? He said, when the desolation comes from far. What, 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 what the Greeks did when they came to visit? He's talking about what the Greeks did. Or not, well, not really the Greeks. He said, it will be a nation that will come whose tongue you will not understand. That will come from afar like an eagle, he said. Yeah, he said that thing gonna come from afar like an eagle. Right? That's our captivity. That's how we got here. Every nation we've been captive, we've been captive to a few nations, right? When we talk about Revelation, I don't know if y'all remember when we went over Revelation, we talked about the, 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 the dragon and the beast. How many heads they had? Four? Four? Four, five? What do we got? How many heads they had? Seven. Seven, right? They had seven, and they had ten, ten crowns. Books say the crowns represent mountains. They say the heads represent kingdoms, right? So the heads represent seven different kingdoms. So let's think about all the kingdoms that we was capt uh, captive by in the Bible, right? We started off where? Egypt. Egypt, right? Egypt was the first one. Who came after that? Assyria. Then Assyria. I'm talking about look at you. I'm talking about don't stand up here, teach you some words. Everybody get out. All the men get out, right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You got Syria. Then what else we got? Daniel, what we got next? Oh, yeah, now I'm putting you on the spot now. You know what I'm saying? You asked some questions, right? Remember Shanice, you know what I'm saying? Shanice, you used to ask them questions, right? You know what I'm saying? What you got? You know what come after Assyria. You got Egypt. You got Assyria. You ain't teaching nothing? Oh, what else we got after Assyria? Babylon, right? You said Persia? Persia, but eventually, though, right? Yeah, eventually. What come before Persia? Medes, right? Then you got Persia. Then this is a little tricky one, right? It's the tricky one. Who come after Persia? Greece. Greece, right? So Greece gets you in there. Where are we at right now? We at six. Then there's one more nation. Rome. Oh, it was right. So when they tell you about seven heads, right? We can look of seven kingdoms, right? And they tell you the heads of kingdom. We can look at seven different kingdoms that have ruled over us, right? So always keep that in mind when you look at the prophecy. But now, let's think about all of these places that ruled over us, right? Because what we have to figure out is, has this prophecy been fulfilled yet? Yeah. He said there's going to be a nation that, he said desolation that's going to come from far. Then another place to tell us, it's going to be a nation whose tongue you what? Don't understand. They're going to come from far like a what? Okay, so... Egypt, do we understand their language? We, we are familiar with them, right? Mm -hmm. What about Assyria? We understand their language? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we spoke with them, right? Sometimes they told us, man, don't, don't speak our language, speak yours. They spoke our language too, right? Babylon, we are familiar with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, language is very similar to ours, right? And after that, we had the Medes. Same thing, very familiar with those people. They're right next door. Persians, right next door. Very familiar with those people. The Greeks. Right? Greek came in. Our people spoke Greek. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they took up over. Oh, our, our people spoke Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. Yeah. It's written in Greek. Mm -hmm. The Romans. Our people, they spoke Greek. Yeah. Right? We knew their language already when they came. So who is this nation whose language we didn't understand? I don't know. It's probably like a nation that like, when they came and they got us and they took us where we were going, we was probably like singing something like, Kumbaya. You know what I'm saying? 
Cause we were trying to call on y'all. We were like, yeah, y'all, kumbaya. You know what I'm saying? Come here. You know what I'm saying? Come by, help us. You know what I'm saying? Kumbaya. Right? And we didn't know what them people were talking about. And they didn't know what we were talking about. So they made a little song. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya just stole our stuff. Just took it right up off and started teaching it to us back in Sunday. Ain't that a cool thing? They, t they take our stuff and teach it back to us in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Like it's there. They got us in there. Father Abraham had many sons. Whole time, Abraham talking about us. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm his son. Had many sons had Father Abraham. A right, little white kid next to you walking. I am one of them. Talk that line. You better cut that out. <laughs> you don't even obey the book how you going to be one of them. And so were you. You darn right I am. So let's just praise the Lord. Right on. That thing used to be tight. You love that thing. I used to be marching that thing. Father Abraham and many sons. You know what I'm saying? Just singing that thing. Make a darn fool out of us. Y'all don't even know who the man is. Y'all don't obey the book. How you a son of Abraham? Only two ways you're going to be a son of Abraham. Right? It's going to be by blood or you by book. And the only one that really matters is by book. Because even you by blood, most high God say he'd cut that thing right on off. Right? Only one that really matters is by book. Y'all don't obey no book. Y'all don't know it. You don't care to darn learn it. Y'all just sit up here in these churches and then, you know what I'm saying, try to reteach us some stuff that, that y'all got from us. And y'all y'all have teaching. They ain't got our people all messed up. Now we singing Kumbaya thinking, you know what I'm saying, it's a Christian phrase. I was just talking to someone about that. But Kumbaya? No, I was just, yeah, that too. I was talking to someone about that, but I was talking about how a lot of uh, the stuff that they getting, like, from us are some stuff wrong. A lot of wrong teaching they getting from a lot of, like, uh, like Catholics and stuff like that they teaching to us, but they not getting, like, the, the real root of a lot of stuff. Oh, no. Nah. So. Yeah, it's just a telephone. You know what I'm saying? It's a game of telephone. The only difference about this game of telephone, it, it'd be like this how, is this how the Bible would be. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it would be like playing telephone, but like writing down what you originally said. So it's like, okay, I'm going to write it down. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, you know what I'm saying? Tasha got a big old head, right? And so you write that thing down <laughs> right here. And now I whisper that thing in T ear. Be like, yeah, Tasha got a big old head. Tell Danielle. You know what I'm saying? He tell Danielle. Hey, baby. What? No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> we just talking about how beautiful you are. So then y'all tell T, he be like, Tasha's is beautiful, right? And then and then T tell Danielle, Tasha look good. You know what I'm saying? And then Danielle tell Anaka, Tasha high. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then Anaka tell him, Tasha look high. Right. You know what I'm saying? So by the time it get to Daniel, you know what I'm saying? Tasha up. You know what I'm saying? And then so we get to that point, and then we look at what was originally written. Tasha is big, right? That's how it is with the book. We playing telephone. Nobody cares to look at what's written. Mm -hmm. Whole time it tells you exactly what was said. We just going by, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. Pastor told me this. That was Pastor told me. That Father but your father, Pastor told I you something. Learned in a white church. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. Oh, oh that's. I never learned about who Abraham was. Oh listen, that's a white church song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because what are the Gentiles trying to do? Right? The Gentiles have to justify. How they are a part of God's people. Right? Somebody who reading the book, whole time you reading about what? Israelites. The people who, uh, you know what I'm saying, direct connected Jews. All these, that's what you read. The try. The whole book is about us, right? Whole book, front to back. Whole book is about us. You get to that New Testament though, it invites the Gentiles in. Yeah. So now the Gentiles have to reinforce, right? Because they think the white Jews is the Jews, right? So it's a battle that they have in between each other. Both of them darn Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? But they have the battle. So they have to reinforce in their children, you can be God's people too. Right? They, they, we replaced the Jews. Right? So that's what they think. They think they replaced us. And they don't even know who we are. You know what I'm saying? But they, they think they replaced us. They think they, they standing in our place. So that's why you have those songs. You don't really need it. You know what I'm saying? You don't happen to black church because we, we, we learned it. But if it was just us, Hebrew, we wouldn't need no song. Like, that don't even make sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what do you mean? But you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to remind me. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I'll keep the Passover. I know I'm a son. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm a son of the man. What you talking about? That thing don't make no sense for us. But they have to reinforce. They got to indoctrinate their kids so they kind of get it in the head. Just because you're not a Jew doesn't mean that you're not God's people. That's what they're trying to, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they ain't got no book. You know what I'm saying? They don't know how to teach it. So it just make a mess. But I learned it. You know what I'm saying? I learned it. I probably learned it in the white church first too, but I, I learned it in all them things.
They sing that. I used to love that thing too. I think it was a nice little song. Yeah, that song wouldn't really sing a lot in the churches. My mom went through. Yeah, and I, it ain't really a black church thing. I learned it in the black church though. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you remember that thing, One Body? You know what I'm saying? You sing that thing, you sing that thing, One Body. You know what I'm saying? But, uh. What's the name? Uh, Miss Michelle? Yeah, Miss Michelle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you remember Miss Michelle? You remember, uh, what's the other one name? Ooh, ain't her name Terry? She actually came, she actually came, she came to our Bible study before. Dang, her name ain't Cherry, and she watching, you know what I'm saying? She watching, she's I forgot her name for a second. Yeah, but y'all You know what I'm saying? But, uh, she know what I'm talking about, though. But yeah, she, uh, she actually came to Bible study a couple times. That's the one that was, you know what I'm saying? She had married, you know what I'm saying? We told them, you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, so I was just talking about that on Facebook today, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know what I'm saying? She had married, and ain't seen her since. You know what I'm saying? I think it's unfortunate. But then the... No, not her. The light skin one, super light skin. She is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, not her. Not her. I do need to reach out to her because um, I don't know what's going on with her. So her name was Candace, right? Yeah. I do need to reach out for her. I'm happy you brought her up. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying. We we you know what I'm saying. We we end up being taught. Eventually, we gotta do this video. You know what I'm saying. Maybe maybe I'll take the kids somewhere for a little bit, and then we come home. Do this video, you know what I'm saying? When you when you get when you get off, because uh, eventually we gotta do this video about the history of Christianity, you know what I'm saying? So people can see, because I think that's one of the things that kind of gets us held up, you know what I'm saying? People don't really understand that like we started this, we started to teach the Christians, or we started to teach the Gentiles. In the midst of us teaching the Gentiles, other Gentiles got us up out of there, you know what I'm saying? And chased us down into Africa, took us as slaves. So now the Gentiles had this little piece of knowledge. And naturally, when you're excited about something, a little piece, it's completely innocent, right? You naturally, you want to start teaching, right? You want to start, like, sharing what you know. Like, no, like, listen, I learned about this man named Yahushua, right? But you, at this time, you ain't got no videos like we have now. So what you got to do? You got to write it. So, when okay, let me write this letter to my friend. I'm going to hand it to this man. He going to take it by horse all the way across here. It's going to take him three months to get there. My friend gets it. In three months, I I haven't learned anything. You know what I'm saying? All the Hebrews is gone. So I wrote this stuff down. I gets there. I write it. When I write in my language, I'm saying Yahushua. But when I write in my language, the only way you can pronounce that is Isus. Like I can't, you can't say Yahushua in my you can't write Yahushua in my language. You know what I'm saying? The closest I can get to it is Yesus. Right? So I say it, and the people was like, oh, so he met somebody who told him about Yesus, and Yesus is God. But at the same time, he's a son. There's something about the Holy Spirit. So it's three gods, but they're all one. Okay, I don't know what to call it. Maybe it's like a trinity or something. I don't know. Okay. So, so you're reading it, and you're trying to put this stuff together. Because there's nobody there. It's not like the original people who got the history and the context. It's there to be like, no, 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 let me line this up for you. This is where this come from. This is how you know this. Nobody there. So you kind of taking guesses at it. Until this day, that's what's happening. They're looking at this book. And they're taking guesses. And so they say, okay, this is what I think this means. Ooh, when Paul says everybody is going to be caught up in the air, that's the rapture. Right? They're doing that now. That's what they do. But you look at it, if you look at the book and you know the history, you can be like, you can line that thing up with other verses and it make perfect sense. Oh, that's no rapture at all. That's just, that's just the day of, you know, that's just the day of the Lord. It ain't no different than anything. That's just the day of the Lord. That's regular business, standard operating business. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you don't know, you take a guess. When you take a guess, you have to, you kind of invest it in that guess. Because guess what? When you take that guess, people like that guess that you came up with. Talking about it's a rapture, people like that. So now you got 20,000 people in a stadium that you preaching to. And you just tell them, just accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you can be raptured out of here. Everybody's excited about that thing. Then maybe you run into somebody to tell you you might be wrong about it. What's your incentive? If you got... 20,000 people, according to you, who are giving their life to Christ, and you really believe they are, what's your incentive to go there and be like, oh, I was wrong about that? They might not want to give their life to Christ no more. What's more important, being right or just, like, giving your life to Christ? In their mind, they rationalize, well, it's more important to people, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if I'm wrong, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got to know that, you know what I'm saying? It's more important that they give their life to Christ. Because in their mind, that's what they think is happening. It's all based off of guesses. And that's what Christianity is. So we get brought over here in boats. They teach us our stuff. Right? You notice the Native Americans didn't accept that crap. The Africans over there, you know what I'm saying? They still don't accept that crap. 
Guess who do accept it over in Africa, though? The Igbos, who are actually Hebrews. The Ashanti, who are actually Hebrews. It's our people accept it. And why do we accept it? Because naturally, that's our stuff. We look at it, you get to teaching it back to us. But man, he died on the cross. What'd you call him again? Jesus. Sound a lot like y'all sure. You know what I'm saying? That's how we looking at it. When they teach it to us, like, sound a lot like y'all sure. So as you getting whipped on your back, you getting stuffed inside of it and starved inside of this house, and they telling you better obey this, it's not all that foreign to you to begin with. So they're just like, nah, I mean, I'll call him Jesus if you want his name, y'all. I'll call him Jesus if you want to. You right? Y'all talk, y'all, y'all, we call him, we call him Elohim, but I mean, all right, you know what I'm saying? I'll call him God if y'all want me to, like whatever, you know what I'm saying, whatever you say. So it's just a language for us, but the story, we had these stories passed down. It was a man who took people through a red, I mean, we call him Moshe, but I mean, if you want to call him Moses, all right, for sure, you know, Moses, Moses it is, you know what I'm saying? They stopped whooping me. And so we learned, we learned a watered down version of our own book. And then we start to teach a watered down version of our own book. That's how we get here. So it's like once we start understanding the history and all the details and all the people and figures throughout history that led us up to the point we are, we can look at Christianity and be like, I get it. All right, I get it. That's why he says I'm not a Christian. All right? That's why he that's why he thinks that's so important, because it just breeds more confusion and more confusion and more confusion. I don't even know what we got here and why we start talking about all this. Where we at? Uh, let's go to Ruth. Huh? Let's go to Ruth. Let's go to the book of Ruth. You know what I'm saying? Let's see if we can cover out a Ruth for a little bit. I ain't gonna be here all night talking to y'all now. Y'all already got me, you know what I mean? Talk about how I was about to knock you out. <laughs> This is Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1. And look at the book of Ruth. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what we got. I don't even want to get to Ruth today. Ruth was, well, let's, all right, let's talk, let's talk a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about Ruth. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get to Ruth today. Let's talk about a little bit of it, though. You know what I'm saying? We go to Ruth. I just want to cover the whole book at one time. You know what I'm saying? That thing is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to like get halfway through it and be like, ah, nah, we'll touch on the lake. We going, we going three hours, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll touch on it tomorrow. I don't want to do that. I just want to tackle the whole book in about, you know what I'm saying? It'll probably take about two hours, but tackle the whole book all at once, you know what I'm saying? But let's let's get to at least a bit again. We we get an intro. You know what I'm saying? See what we can figure out about it. This is Ruth chapter one, verse one. Ruth is right after Judges. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. All right, so a certain man of where? Bethlehem, Judah. What does that remind us of? Yahushua. Yahushua, right? Where was Yahushua born at? Bethlehem. Bethlehem, inside of what? A manger. I don't even know what a darn manger is. Right. <laughs> you, know about, you know, these people, they always translate something. You never heard of no darn manger. I don't even want to tell the story. I don't even want people to confuse me for no Christian. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This thing's crazy. Ain't this thing bad? That ain't, that ain't written in the book. It's our book. It's our darn book. It's written in the book. These Christians made such a mess up. We don't even, we might sound like a Christian by saying what's in our book. <laughs> that ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? That's how a lot of these Hebrews go wrong. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these Hebrews go wrong because like some, some true things have become Christian themes. You know what I'm saying? Like it's true that there was what they call immaculate conception, right? It, it's true that there was a virgin birth, but that's become such a Christian theme that us as Hebrews, we looking like, man, I don't want to accept that thing. I know the Christians better. I know they wrong about that thing. So now we start denying the truth just based off of the fact that we don't want to be a Christian. You know what I'm saying? I think it's dangerous. That's why, that's why we got to get to a point where it's like we're not, we not so bitter against Christians that we become bitter against the truth. Just because the Christians have, have picked up our truth and ran with it. There's a whole lot of stuff Christians got wrong. It's a whole lot. You ain't gotta get mad at them. For yeah, it's a whole right. lot they got wrong. But you know what I'm saying? When they get when they get stuff right, it's all right to be like, yeah, that they're right about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was right. You know what I'm saying? When they talking about the virgin birth, now nah, they spot on about that thing. You know what I'm saying? When they talking about you know what I'm saying? Jesus being you know what I'm saying? God, they spot on about that thing. Like a lot of Hebrews don't want to admit Jesus ain't no God. You know what I'm saying? Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Jesus was just this or Jesus was just that. You know what I'm saying? Jesus, how Jesus gonna be God if he say you know what I'm saying? He say this, that, and the other, right? You look at it. 
Books say Jesus God now. We call him Yahushua in our book, you know what I'm saying? But books say Jesus God now. He can't dance around it, right? So we got you we gotta be able to accept what the truth is, even if it make us look like a Christian, but at the same time, pay attention to what the Christian talked about that would make us look like hypocrites. Right? Which would be, you know, trying to get us to celebrate some darn Christmas or trying to get us to believe that no matter what we do, we can be saved or that our works don't matter. And, God doesn't care about what you do, and there's nothing that you can do to make God love you any more or less. And all these different things that they come up with, all that stuff is hogwash. Absolute mess. That's what we can focus on. And we can talk about that stuff all day. All right? Yeah, you got you got virgin bird, right? Let's talk about that. We can talk about that thing all day. They ain't never gonna back off of it. They never gonna understand it, right? Let's keep going. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. Mm -hmm. He and his wife. He went to sojourn sons. in the country of what? Moab. Okay. He and his wife and his two sons. Okay. And the name of the man was Elimelech. Okay. And the name of his wife was Na wife was Naomi. Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Shialon. Mm -hmm. Shilion. Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. Mm -hmm. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Mm -hmm. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left and her two sons. So now, Naomi's husband died. Naomi is now a what? Widow. A widow, right? Let's see. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was o Orpha. Orpha. So they took them wives of where? Moab. And the name of the one was Orpha. What does that make us think of? Hold on, hold we got. Let's go. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy. Was it twenty one or twenty three? Let's try twenty one first. I want to say Deuteronomy chapter twenty one. Should be right in verse one. Shouldn't be able to miss it. Ah, I like it. Far away country. All right. They went. They 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 soldier and they they visited. The land of Moab. Ain't that what it just said? Mm -hmm. Alright, so they went and they visited the land of Moab. Pops died. Two sons ended up doing what? Taking wives. I gotta give me a woman. I'm in the land of Moab, ain't I? So what kind of woman I'm end up getting? Moabite. Give me a Moabite woman. I'm in the land of Moab. Moab. I gotta give me a woman now. Mom's is a widow. You know what I'm saying? I gotta start putting my family together. Start taking, taking care of business. So I give me a woman in Moab. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 1. What the book say? If one be found slain in the land, that ain't what I want. No. That's tw give me twenty three. Might be twenty two. Uh, it's Deuteronomy chapter twenty three. Give me verse one. He that is wounded in the stone. No, that ain't what I want. It's, it's around here though. What twenty four? Mm -hmm. It ain't twenty four. That's talking about far. divorce. Twenty four talking about divorce. Mm -hmm. Uh, twenty. No, I think it's twenty. Two? It's 21 or 22. Let me search for it. No, I ain't 21. Not starting off like that. Again. Yeah, it's like oh, it is wounded in the stones. You're right. It is wounded in the stones. Yeah. Because he's saying when you, if a man be wounded in the stones, he can't enter into the congregation. That is it. Yeah, but in 21, it's the... It's, it's 21 wounded in the stones? No. Yeah, no. What did you just read that said wounded in the stones? 23. 23? No, not 23. You just yeah, read yeah, yeah. something that said Alright, so this is, uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. My bad. He that is wounded in the stones or has his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Right, so it's talking about the genitals, right? Somebody <laughs> deformed in the genitals, he said, ain't no way you can come into the congregation of the Lord, right? Keep going. So the way our, the way our thing was set up, you had we had our tabernacle, right? And then we had a congregation when whenever we came together for the tabernacle. And then you had the outer camp. So whenever we came together to worship the Most High God, if you were, if you fit any of these descriptions, you had to be on the outer camp, right? So you can't come into the congregation of the Most High God, right? So let's hear about it. A lot of people think that this is saying you can't be a part of Israel or anything like that. That's not what the books say, right? We know, we know that, keep reading, Mark says. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Right, so a bastard is just saying an illegitimate child, right? 
you looking like a like, so a child. It is going to describe to you what illegitimate children are. So this, these would be examples of illegitimate children. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation. Shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever? Right. So if you if you mix with a, uh, with an Ammonite or a Moabite, that you become a bastard at that point. Right. You become a, a, a illegitimate child. So he's saying a flat Moabite or a flat uh, um, Am Ammonite, you can't come into the congregation of the Lord. Right. Let's hear about it. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, El Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Right? So he said, before those reasons, they can't come into the congregation of the Lord. Now, watch what happens here. Right? Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Let's go back to Ruth. How many generations did it say? Ten, Ten generations? Yeah. Okay. And they took the wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. And Malon and Shelion died. Also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Right? So now, you have these women that they become widows as well. Right? All of them, they're Moabites. Flat out Moabites. So, when it, the book told us, you can't come to the congregation of the Lord if you were a, uh, a Moabite. But also, if you, had, if you were an illegitimate child. So, as a Moabite, they wasn't supposed to be a part of our congregation. Right? Still, these men married. Why did that happen? Because we were able to marry to the, in the other lands that were far off. Mm -hmm. The lands that wasn't the land of Canaan. And what else? And it was in a land. And it's been 10 generations. Mm -hmm. Remember, we was, in the, we was in the land in the time of Judges. How many years? About 400. About 400 years. Right? About 400 years. So in 400 years... A lot of generations that you can push out. Right? Generation just means I had children, mm -hmm. and then my children had children, children. That's two generations. So every little new set of children that comes out is a generation. Ten of the things pass in 400 years. More than ten. Right? 400 years. So then, now, more bites as well. So a more bite could be seen just like one of us. So now, that's why we look, uh, let's go, uh, Matthew. I don't know if it's one. What if I want one or three? It's one. I think. It's one. Yeah, Matthew chapter one, verse one. It's Matthew chapter one, verse one. generation of Yahushua. The book the of what? Of the generation. Mm -hmm. Yahushua, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judah and his brother. And Judah begot Perez, and Zerah, and Tamar. And Perez begot Ephraim, and Ephraim begot Aram. And Aram begot Amenadab, and Amenadab begot Nashon. And Nashon begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz. But we got who? Boaz of Rahab. So, we have fast forward to the end of the, the story of Ruth. At the end of it, Ruth, who was married to a man who died and then became a widow, Ruth ended up being married again to a man named Boaz. Since her first husband had died, she could be remarried, right? So, she ended up marrying Boaz. And then, at, um, at that point, Boaz said, you know what I'm saying? All right, for sure. And Boaz ended up being 
the grandfather, great, 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 great grandfather of Yahushua. So that would make, according to these people who say that we can't marry outside of our own people, that would make Yahushua what? Illegitimate. Illegitimate child. If that, if what they hold to is true. Plus, before that, Boaz's dad was married to Rachel, the woman mm -hmm. that saved us, uh, saved Joshua. Mm -hmm. She was a what? Canaanite? She was a Canaanite. Mm -hmm. Right. So we look at it. We should hold all through what these people believe. Right, a lot of these people they struggling, you know what I'm saying, find themselves with a Gentile wife and they be like, Oh my god. Even goodness, in the law it says you can get a wife that's not of the nations of Canaan. Yeah, book it clear about it. You know these people don't know what they are talking Most about. Had a darn Egyptian wife. All these people had, you know what I'm saying? We had so many people that darn mix. I mean Judah, let's talk about it. Judah had a Canaanite. Right? Yeah. Judah had a darn Canaanite. You know what I'm saying? They, the book is very clear about all that stuff. Had it, and we all know where y'all she will come from. Yo, she got so much mixed blood in him, that thing ridiculous. Yeah, that was before the law came. Right? All this stuff, you know what I'm saying? That stuff, that stuff, we've been mixed up all types of times. You know what I'm saying? That stuff, all that stuff running through our blood already. Right? So we look at it, it's like the law is very specific about who we couldn't mix with. Yeah. Canaanites, Amorites, right? Don't mess with them. You know what I'm saying? Do not mess with them. Other than that, folks say, man, you better get what you like. You better get what you like and be able to take care of her. You know what I'm saying? But get what you like and be able to take care of them. Stay with them. Right? It's the only thing you got. Right? You got to be able to make that decision. He started yeah, limiting us. Yeah, uh, when we went to Babylon, he was like, take wives. Yeah, he said, go there and take wives. Build houses. Yeah, get what you like. Book ain't never going to tell you. See here, you know what I'm saying? You got to do this. You got, man, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Book tell us exactly what we got to do. He ain't never told us exactly what wife we got to pick. Exactly what husband we got to go with. That's crazy. People run their darn mouth. They run their darn mouth, get to talking too quick, and guess what they they don't know how to do? No, oh, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. That's that one thing, just, oops, I made a mistake. Like, I saw that, I saw that, and I thought that's what it said. That thing be the hardest thing, especially, I mean, when you got a crowd of people, when you make all these YouTube videos teaching it this way, and you got to go back and admit that you was wrong about it. But you know how quick I get in front of this? Uh, don't even watch the first 107 videos. Because uh, I didn't know what I was talking about at that point. Yeah, please, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no time for this stuff. Please. Have we ever told anything wrong? Probably. I'm trying to think. I know we have. Oh, we did teach it wrong. We did teach you something wrong about baptism at first, right? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember either. But it was something I remember. I remember some dude came over and we was talking about baptism. And I was like, you wrong about most of what you said. The dude who claimed he was a prophet. No, not that dude. I wouldn't listen to that darn dude. <laughs> was it Justin? Dude came over to my house talking about how is he talking, baby? My, my baby know how to do it. You know how to do his voice real good. I don't know. I know him like that. Now you used to do his voice real good. He used to be, ah, nah, see, let me, you know what I'm saying? Ah, see, let me, you know what I'm saying? Nah, say, I am with God. Ah, see, you know what I'm saying? She used to do that thing. She used to have me rolling in front of that dude. That thing used to be That's funny. A lot of but it's like a regular dude. He like my he like my age. Really? You know what I'm saying? I know people that went to high school with. Him. I'm like, bro, I know you. Like, why are you why are you talking like that to me? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that thing is hilarious. Like he came over. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't know him, know him, but I've seen him around, and I know people that know him. And after that time, I've seen him in regular environments. Like you talk like a, like one of us. Like why are you coming to my house talking like? You know what I'm saying? Like you a pastor in the middle middle of your sermon. Like you know what I'm saying? You don't get out of my house with that foolishness. But you know, you know what I'm saying? People always come over and uh, they used to, at that time, you know, I, I, I would engage in all these arguments. So they would come over, sit in, you know what I'm saying? And, and then sit here and argue with us. Um, but there was one guy, he was wrong about just about everything he was saying. But it was one thing, I forgot exactly, but it was one thing about baptism. And I believe I was teaching it wrong. I was teaching, uh, I was teaching, uh, can't remember. Oh no, you know what it is? I was teaching that you didn't have to be baptized to be saved. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Baptized, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Baptism is, I was like, baptism is just a symbol, just another, you know what I'm saying? You didn't have to be baptized. And he was from Church of God and Rice. He was God in Christ. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, he was, it was the older one that came. Yeah, it was that night. So the older one came with him, you know what I'm saying? And then he left. And then it was the younger one who was a little more sensible. You know what I'm saying? So I went to his church, 
And he came to my Bible study, and I went back to his church, and we used to always argue about a whole bunch of stuff. Cause I was trying to show him like what it is, but that's the one like they hold church. They main thing is you have to be like that's what they claim the fame is like. You have to be baptized. Have to be baptized. Remember, he's always want to go. Not nah, open up Acts chapter two. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's where it talks. That's the first place to start talking about baptism. And he's always open up to that thing. And I'm like, all right. And so we start getting an argument. He's like, okay, so if you trying to say that um, you don't have to be baptized, then why does the Messiah say you got to be baptized? He say, you know, Christ, but whatever. Um, and I'm like, well, he said it, but I can prove to you somebody who he said would go to paradise even though they weren't baptized. And so when Yahushua was hanging on the cross, I'm thinking I'm lighting his butt up. I'm like, Yahushua was hanging on the cross. He looked over to the man. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. He didn't get baptized because he is on the cross. And he is a sinner up to that point. So I'm like, boom, shaka, laka. What you got for me? He come back, he is like, all right, so did Yahushua die on the cross before or after that? I was like, he died on the cross after. And he was like, okay. So after Yahushua died on the cross, he said Jesus, of course. But after, after he died on the cross, then he came back to the people, right? And then he said, go out and baptize every man. So I was like, yeah. So he was like, so the commandment came after that man was dead. And I was like, darn it. <laughs> Good darn point. And he was like, and that's a commandment, ain't it? And you're the one that says we gotta keep all his commandments. And I was like, you darn right, we gotta keep them all. And so then you have to be baptized, then, right? I was like, you darn right, we gotta be baptized. At the end book, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna here and be like, no, I don't get that. I think crazy. Like, yeah, all right, well, you got that one. You know what I'm saying? It's been other times we've been wrong about stuff too. I just can't think of all them things. You know what I'm saying? I remember that one though. I was like, I was like. Dang, that thing didn't feel good at all. That thing had my heart, think, uh, my heart dropped. I was like, I've been teaching it wrong. The marriage oh, one. Crap. Yeah, the marriage one was another one. one yeah. Cause I know, yeah, and I feel bad about that one. Cause I know I didn't, I've, I've given advice to people like, are you good as long as they cheat? You know what I'm saying? You good, go get you another one. It was, first we were saying as long as they cheat. Then I didn't feel comfortable with that after a while. And I was like, well, no, but I was saying, if you got married before you was a believer, then, you know what I'm saying, then you can leave and marry somebody else. You know what I'm saying? My thought was, because Paul said, if that if you had an unbelieving husband, you know what I'm saying, and he don't want to be with you, then, you know what I'm saying, then, you know what I'm saying, you're not bound by that situation. So I took that as, oh, you're not bound by that situation, go get you another husband. You know what I'm saying? But our law tells us very clearly, one husband, one wife. You know what I'm saying? Got to do it. And, until they uh, grab a uh, Romans, was it Romans 7? Mm. Grab it. What are we gonna do? Let me get up out of here. You know what I'm I know all y'all wanna, you know what I'm saying, go to the BGK concert. <laughs> what are we gonna eat? Why are you always trying to eat without me? Y'all was gonna do the right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, well, I just gave Philip $168. My wife can't eat nothing. Oh wow! <laughs> Everybody on the diet. It's Romans chapter seven, verse one. Mark the book seven. Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. Mm -hmm. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. Mm -hmm. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of the husband. Mm -hmm. So then. If while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. That got that. That done. Right? But if, that got that. Keep going. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So go. that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. I don't want to hear about y'all putting no darn cyanide. You know what I'm saying? Nobody coughing. Don't kill him. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear none of that. Ain't what I'm condoning now. I'm just saying, if it happened, it happened. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to do nothing to make it happen, though. You know what I'm saying? But that's the book, right? The book is very clear. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got to go with it. it. Ain't the only place either. But you know what I'm saying? So it took me, I had to look at that. I was like, ooh. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if anybody corrected it. Well, it had to be. I'm sure somebody had to. Right, well, it had to come to me right through some argument because I used to argue all the time back then. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I learned the book. Because the difference between a lot, me and a lot of people, or us and a lot of people, is that if you show it to us in the book, we roll it. That's 
for us, it was crazy. Like, our hearts dropped. You know what I'm saying? That thing felt, felt super scary just to feel like we teaching it wrong. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that don't have that. And they look at us. A lot of people look at us like, oh, they just think they right about Because, you know, our attitude, you know, they think we arrogant. So, they, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these other people lying about the book. That's how they, that, that, that's, that's what they perceive we saying. We, they perceive we saying everybody else lying. Everybody else is lying. <laughs> yeah, they perceive, you know what I'm saying? We saying everybody else lying. And no, we ain't saying everybody else lying. We just saying the people that we say is lying and lying. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't just making it up. We show it to you in the book. Right? It's here. You know what I'm saying? We go with what's written. So when people see that and they hear that and they feel like, you know what I'm saying, we might have a point, they have a hard time adjusting. They have a hard time admitting it. You know what I'm saying? So they kind of, it becomes like a pride thing for them. It's like, I will. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, that's not what that means. You know what I'm saying? We, we sit down with some brothers. Sit here. They start off the conversation. You know, you know when people are confident about the Bible, they start to come now, now, brothers, you know what I mean? Now, you know, it's always thus says the Lord. That's what we do around here. If the book say it, they start off confident talking to us like that. If the book say it, that's what we go. You know, that's how we do it. We put precept on top of precept. Just run their darn mouth. Me and T just looking at them like, uh-huh. That what y'all do? Precept on top of precept. Okay. That's right. We open up with them, but that book, about 30 minutes in, them boys are like, nah, that's not even what it means. You know what, Paul... Paul ain't even, you know what I mean? Like, Paul ain't the Messiah. Paul can't say that. When Paul say that, he ain't speaking for God. Yeah, okay. Precept from, precept from a precept, don't it? Oh, yeah, rightly divide the word. Who told you that? Paul. Oh, but he's he speaking for God when he said that, but he ain't. Oh, okay. He ain't gonna get out of here. We ain't got time to be listening to stuff. Because when they confident about the book, oh, yeah, it's what the book say. As soon as you get the bust in their butt with it, it ain't what the book say no more. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes the book could be wrong. You know, books were taken out. Yeah, you know I'm saying some of the stuff would change by the Gentile. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, okay. Ain't what the books say. You started off talking about what the books say, though, huh? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She and a whole group of, of it's what the books say until it say something different from what I thought it said. And then, and then you got to read some other text yeah. another book outside. Now, it's the yeah. Apocrypha. And then they never going to quote it. They never going to put the Apocrypha in there for you. Because they don't know what the darn Apocrypha. They ain't even read the darn Bible. Why are you going to start reading the Apocrypha you ain't read the Bible yet? These people be lying. I be listening. I be out there frustrated. I be like, damn, stop talking to these people. But then I like it because she be talking to them. She be right. You know what I'm saying? I be like, oh, damn, you keep talking to these people. You know what I'm saying? That thing be good. But you looking at a man like, and these people are nuts. I like that Mia girl though. She like she ain't too far off. You know what I'm saying? She be wrong, wrong as a mug. But some of the stuff she be saying, I be like, eh, you just need a little guidance. You know what I'm saying? You be like, that's somebody husband, right? I don't know what that's about. Oh. Yeah. That's just, uh, I thought she was a Gentile. I was talking to her like she a Gentile. And she said, I know we Hebrews. I'm like, let me look at this profile picture. I'm like, you sure we a little, you know what I'm saying? Like, sure we a little Hebrew, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, how you I ate my book then, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you still a Christian, though. We gonna have to work on that thing. <laughs> have to work on it. But yeah, um, but it's just important, man. Just make sure that, that, that we look at this book, we learn from it, understand our history, and that we can... We can just kind of position ourselves to be a representation for our kids. Um, and on top of that, make sure that we save our own souls, right? But we got to somehow keep that thing going because we in a unique position, you know what I'm saying? Our kids our kids are in a position where they get to learn the book, all right? They, they, have, they have parents that really understand and know the book. And it might not have been a time in all throughout our time in America where that's been the case, you know what I mean? Like, we've always had some watered-down version of, of, of our religion that's been kind of fed back to us, force-fed and, and, and twisted. And, you know what I'm saying? Now we're in a position where we had a truth, we learned it, you know what I'm saying? We're still learning it, and now we can represent it and at the same time teach it to our kids and not be hypocrites like, you know what I'm saying, like some of, some of our parents were. You know what I'm saying? Not, not to be disrespectful to them, but... Um, just, just to state it as fact, our, our parents believed something that they were taught and didn't live according to what the word says, and that's what y'all sure would call a hypocrite. Ooh, my mama. Huh? I put her out there. My mama. I mean, all of them. All of them. You know what I'm saying? All of them. You know what I'm saying? Right now. Yeah, all of them. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's not to be disrespectful if any of them are watching this or anything like that. It's like, you know what I'm saying? But at some point, we, we, have, to, we have to acknowledge that. You know what I'm saying? My mama, the other day, we were talking. You know, and I'm trying not to, you know, I know my mom going through stuff, so I'm trying not to even, like, engage in certain yeah. conversations with her because I know I know how we both get. We both, you know what I'm saying, start getting passionate or whatever. Even my mom was talking about, you know what I'm saying, what she was talking about, Randy, you remember? Were you there? Nope. 
forgot what that thing was about. She was talking about uh, she was talking about you. She was talking about you and uh, Chi Chi, and talking about how you know what I'm saying she didn't she didn't teach she didn't teach us certain things. She was like you know what I'm saying Randy was talking about this that and other. I ain't oh. never taught him that. Oh yeah. What was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, what was she talking about, man? I forgot. <laughs> That thing, you know, that thing floored me because she was just sitting there looking me in my darn face. It was I ain't. What she was talking about last time. She is like, I ain't. No. Nah. She is like. That was funny. Like, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was she talking about? <laughs> no, what was she talking about? I can't remember. It's either. something that you said. That's what I didn't know. That's what mom said. Yeah, and so she was like, I don't, I don't know where they got that from. I talk, I, I talk y'all oh, that stuff. Got it. What was it? When you die, I thought. Oh yeah, you, you die, go. you go straight to heaven. Yeah. She was like, I ain't never taught y'all nothing like that. I ain't never taught him nothing like that. I don't know. I was like, Ma, you gonna look me right in my face and say you ain't never taught me that? She was like, I ain't never taught y'all that message that nothing. I was like, not only have you taught it, you went along with it in churches that taught it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you didn't stop and be like, "No, nah, that's a lie." You know what I'm saying? He ain't never said that to that's us. Lie. And we definitely had pastors standing over us say that. Multiple pastors. Like, I'm not crazy. I know this thing. But it's like you know what I'm saying. Her her memory of it, or or the fact that she won't accept it, is like you know what I'm saying. That thing happens, and I think it's tough because that's a, that come with a whole lot. Like, imagine us teaching our kids something wrong, and coming like 30 <laughs> years later, 20 years later. And you find out it's wrong. You've been teaching them. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's not something that's easy to accept. It's like you don't ever want to be the one that, that feels. Like you don't ever want to put your kids in a position where they can say that you led them astray. You know what I'm saying? So we got we to gotta, we gotta look at it from our parents' point of view. You know what I'm saying? Like from their point of view, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to accept to, to say that because they love us. Like they love us with everything they got and they struggle for us and they've done a whole lot of stuff for us. Right, even the messed up situations, right? You know, what I'm saying? It's, even in those situations, you gotta understand. A lot of us have been abused and hurt, and so when we go, we abuse and we hurt, and that's the same position our mamas is in, same positions our parents are in. Period. Right. So even when they, it's a messed up situation, these people loved us, right? They loved us and they did it. They may not know how to love properly, right? They may not have really loved us because they didn't. They didn't learn love from the book. But in their mind, it's, if you ask them, you could hook them up to a polygraph and then they'd pass it, right? Because in their mind, they loved us. So we have to be able to look at that and and, and kind of kind of put ourselves where they are as we communicate with them. And I'm still learning that, you know what I'm saying? I'm still learning learning how to be more patient with my parents and everything and just be like, I get it, you know what I'm saying? I know that thing hard, you know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's hard to have your son, you know what I'm saying? You're a strong black woman. I always have to get it in on your own. Have your son come in and start teaching you something. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? My mama, my family, my my family, who run my family? The men or the women? The women. That thing done in my family. Let me tell you something. My family, strong black women. You know what I'm saying? You got every darn one of them going to talk louder, faster, smarter, all that thing. They're going to be strong. I mean, we got a house. Just, I mean, all of goodness gracious. I'll be looking at that thing like, whoo. They uncomfortable coming to my house. You know what I'm saying? They be like, man, they don't relate to Tasha. You know what I'm saying? They don't see that. They be looking at that and be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, boy, you better go ahead and make your own darn plate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, like, no, nah, auntie. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry. We got this worked out over here. You, 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 you do your, like, you do your. We got this worked out. all of them be trying to fight me to fix Philip his plate. Oh, no, Philip needs this and this and that. And piled on the same like. Now that's only like, when they, no, that made me not want to fix this later. Now that's that's only when they trying to comp- control the portions. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they be like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, you know what I'm saying? We gonna do it because we don't need everybody trying to take too much. Sometimes they control. Outside of that, it's just like go get it yourself. Like, yeah, your legs ain't broke. Every time she go, they be actually they be looking at me like, uh, mm. no, couldn't be me. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm like you darn right, it couldn't be you. <laughs> be like goodness gracious, but you know that's how it go, right? It's, it's it's just different times, different people raised us and all that. What we have opportunity to do now is get that much closer to the truth. Right now, we got it. You know what I'm saying? That thing is true. In terms of what, what it takes to be saved, that thing is true. You ain't going to find too many people that accurately, ac- accurately teach what it takes to be saved. Unfortunately. Right? They're going to they tell you you just got to believe. The Hebrew going to tell you you got to keep the law. They're going to tell you all these things. But it, you're not going to find too many people that just really narrow down 
these are the things that you have to do and these are the things you have to turn in. We can now, we can write that thing out in commandment form. Thou shalt not if we wanted to. And that thing would be right. In the right? Yeah. That thing would be right. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to do that because we ain't got no bit. It don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? That thing in the book, you want to read it, read it from there. But I'm just saying, if we wanted to make, you know what I'm saying, a purpose-driven life, you know what I'm saying? If we wanted to make that book, we could do that thing and that thing would be right. You know what I'm saying? Be like, yeah, just because of this verse, it's that and other. That's just that's what we're doing in Facebook. You know what I'm saying? But I, don't, I just don't, it don't make no sense to make a book when you got a book. You got a book, you just read the book. What I'm going to make a book about a book for? If I'm making a book about a book, that's me saying, oh, I just don't understand the book. Like, I, you know, I don't expect these people to understand the book. If you don't understand the book, then you ain't meant to understand the book. I'm going to explain the book to you. You know what I'm saying? You read the book. Or don't read the book. Just believe what I explained to you. But what I ain't going to do, I'm, I'm, I ain't going to make another book about a book. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. That don't make no darn sense. What I'm going to make another book for? You know what I'm saying? But so, so somebody, what, what, what happened? I make another book, right? I make a book about what the Bible was saying. And then people start looking and be like, oh, I understand your book. So now they exalt what I'm saying over what? I right, got that. Most I got going to make some. It was right. Everything I wrote was right. Most I got to retrospectively make that thing wrong just to make me look like a fool. Like, oh, it was right when I wrote it. Most I got to see that thing happen. It's wrong now. You know what I'm saying? That thing wrong now. Send me right to hell just because. Now, it ain't going to be me. You know what I'm saying? You read the book. We safe right here. The book. There you go. I explain it to you. And who's to say, you know what I'm saying, if the Antichrist comes and, you know what I'm saying, loophole around us to shrug. All you. types of stuff. You, you know take some that some way that I said it, create a loophole, because the way the most high God say it, mm -hmm. you ain't wiggling around that thing. Uh -huh. Dang, we were talking about it earlier. What you were talking about? Uh, we was talking about loopholes about um so you trying to remember that thing. Uh, Damn, I don't know what we were talking about. about. <laughs> we were talking about all types of stuff. No, nah, we talking about, you know what I'm saying? You look at that book and it's laid out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? How many times, how many times these concepts that we read in the book, how many times is this explained? Like one time? It said a bunch of times. He'd sit there and be like, don't you know that there's going to be some people that come from another place, you know what I'm saying? They're going to teach lies. Then he come back and you going to get lies from people that come from a different place. Then he's going to go on to talking about something else in the rest of the verses. Then after that, but don't forget, it's going to be some lies that some people teach. They cover these things like, we read it, they, they cover this thing back to back. They repeat it, say it a different way. They be trying to look truly, truly. You know what I'm saying? They be trying to get our attention. It's just us that be sitting there. Oh, boy, that's beautiful. Oh, God's like poetry reading this. Oh, love is. Hey, you read, uh, what is it, First Corinthians 13? Love is. Read that thing real quick. I like that thing. Because they be reading this thing at weddings. Because I be looking at that thing, be blowing my mind. Be like, you don't know what y'all read. This is the answer. This is the, you know what I'm Y'all unlocked it. The mystery is revealed. Y'all reading that wedding play. Like, oh, love is kind. Well, that'll be annoying. You know what I'm saying? Love is, oh, this is something to get married to. It is. That's cool. But the whole key to everything is right there, and everybody just miss it. That thing be blowing my mind. Same thing with uh, uh, John 3.16. Mm -hmm. The key to the whole book is right after John 3.16, but they stop right there. God so loved the world. I'd be like, man, y'all go. Y'all ain't get it. Whole book is lining up right here, and y'all just stop reading. Y'all put Tim Tebow put that and just stop. No, I'll put John 3, 16 through 21. You know what I'm saying? Then you got something you can work with. Yeah, Listen. People, that, people don't believe you that. No, they, they don't believe that. Yeah, people that don't believe that. They're like, well, what about this? I'm doing a book, but they say that, don't they? Yeah, God loved the world, didn't he? Okay, right? Thou shalt not judge, right? <laughs> that's the first scripture I remember. John, thou shalt not judge. That's everybody. No one's ever going to forget John 3.16. Mm -hmm. Sheesh, they drew that thing into your head. Yeah. <laughs> it's some good stuff right after it, too. That thing. Maybe Mind you want to read. Never once Maybe you want not even want to read John 3.16. No, they butchered it so much. Bro, they lying. They, they, man, that thing. That thing. I, when I read John 3.16 and, like, understood it, I read it. But when I kept reading and I understood what I kept reading, I was like, it's right there. It's like telling us right there. Like, you have to obey the man. What you mean? Let me see what we got here. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's see who getting married today. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become... When you say charity, what is it saying? Love. Uh -huh. okay. I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. 
And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, I pro it profits me nothing. Right? On the surface, those things sound like charity. You give yourself for somebody to be burned. You give all the goods that you have to people. That sounds like love. Right? But look how the man break it down. Like, if you're not paying attention, all this stuff just go, oh, that's a beautiful, this is just such a beautiful, because that's how we look at it. Right? And even that, that's what, we ain't got to get it, but that's what Ezekiel told us. It like, look, Ezekiel, you a prophet, man, but you're going to be talking to these people. And how they going to look at your words? Like a song. They going to look at you like you just singing a song to them. And that's how we are. When these pastors get to preaching or we read something out of the book, we read, oh, I mean, that just makes me feel better about they life. hear your words, but they ain't going to do it. It's just a song. It's just poetry for us. They ain't going to darn poetry, yeah, I mean, man, trying to teach you something. Uh, I mean, that's what people like right now, they use a lot. Let's see. What we, we already read it, y'all. We should have been reading this in our reading. Watch, it. Watch what love said is. Charity suffers long and is kind. Right? Charity, love, suffers long and it's kind. Envies not. It doesn't envy. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Right? Charity is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Right? Charity always tries to keep itself appropriate. Right? Don't don't be wilding out. Don't be acting crazy. What else? Seeks not her own. Right? Charity is not seeking his own. Is right? Not, is not easily provoked. Ter love is not easily provoked. Right? It's no evil. Is not thinking any evil. And what else? Rejoice not in iniquity. That got that. <laughs> but rejoice in the okay. truth. That got that. that. That one right there. I mean, we will roll with all of them. It's a rejoice not in That got they that. They even go to that. No, they don't. No, you know they, you know they stop. They ain't stopping right at love vaunted itself. Yes. Yeah, what? They stop at uh, like verse. They, uh, they do what? Like verse four. I mean, to, yeah. After that, it's like, after that, it's like, all right, you may kiss the bride. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That thing, they got, they get right on with. Because you look at it, nobody sees the value in sin, right? They be looking at, or not the value in sin, but the value in understanding sin. Yeah. Right. It tells you flat out, guess what? Love does not rejoice in iniquity. What does that mean? Nothing. How do we say that in English? Sin. Don't be sin. No. Well, how do we say what was said in English, though? How do we translate that? Love, is Love not does happy. not rejoice in iniquity. How do we say that differently? Love is not happy in sin. sin. Yeah. Love is not happy in sin. Cheers. Period. If I'm if I'm sinning, guess what I'm not? Yeah. You're not in love. So now that too. But now you look at these people and it's like, oh no, I'm good. I love my life. I enjoy my life. And guess what they're doing? Sinning. Yeah. Alrighty, guess what you don't have? Love. So then when the Messiah says, love your neighbor as yourself, and in this you fulfilled the law and the prophets. Because you know that's what the Christian claim to fame is, right? Yeah, yeah. They claim the fame is in love, just by loving one another, the law is done away with, brother. You don't need the law. You just have to love Jesus. Jesus died for that. <laughs> right? They light your butt up and you be sitting there stuck for a second. And then you learn that love does not rejoice in sin. And guess what they tell you? It's impossible to stop what? Sin. I got that. Are you happy? You good with that? It's impossible for you? And you good with that? You all right with it? You enjoy your life. Jesus gives me joy. All right, that's all I need to know. I appreciate you, sir. You have a wonderful day. That's it. You rejoicing in what? I got that. That ain't love. So that means you can't be loving your neighbor as yourself. Your whole love is disqualified. So what we think is love, sure, you giving, just like he said in the beginning, you might you might go feed the homeless and give everything you got. Everything Christian do. That thing look like love. Right? But guess what? Rejoicing in iniquity, disqualified, right? It's important for us. We have to know that. And the thing about it is, it's simple, right there. Like, Very simple. simple, simple. You know what make it complicated though? I don't want to believe it. I, mean, I don't want to believe it. No, see, it don't mean that. It's just saying that's when stuff get complicated. If we can get past that though. Any questions? All right, let's pray out.